What's going on YouTube? Uh, today what we're going to be doing is converting your stock steering shaft into a solid steering shaft. Um, this is a pretty much a $23 DIY job and it's going to save you like $200 because some of these things can go online for like $250. So uh, what we have here is the stock steering shaft out of a fox body, freshly picked from the junkyard, as you can tell by its nice crusty flaky condition. Um, the reason why you want to convert these things is because this right here is what connects your steering shaft to your rack and pinion. This is called a rag joint and this is basically like a really dumbed down version of a U-joint and uh, all you have that's connecting it is this thin piece of rubber here, this flimsy piece of rubber and that's what gives you your squishy sloppy steering feel and it just um, you know that's what was cool back in the 70s and nobody wants that now so in order to make this conversion happen you're gonna need to go online and buy yourself a steering shaft universal joint these are really easy to find um, and they're really easy to buy in the size that you need so the u-joint size that you need is a three quarters 36 spline on one side and a three quarters smooth on the other side and that's basically going to take the place of this rag joint this uh, three quarters 36 will thread directly onto the spline on your rack and pinion and this is going to weld to the other end so uh, without further ado uh, what we're going to do is try and actually remove this rag joint assembly from the solid steering rod. All right, now that we have this piece out of the way, we can easily uh, just chop this here with the grinder. And what I'm thinking is we'll make a cut here and here with the grinder and hopefully we'll be able to just smack this end piece off with a hammer and uh, it won't be too difficult so let's see So there's the cuts that I made, and we'll see if we can smack that off with a hammer. Not too difficult at all. Okay, so since we're going to be welding on this end, we're definitely going to want to clean up the surfaces. And uh, while we're at it, we're just going to clean up as much of this as we can so we can uh, repaint it and get it looking nice so they can go back inside the vehicle. All right, so I definitely went a little bit above and beyond uh, with my cleaning up the area. So I pretty much got this whole thing stripped down, which isn't necessary, but I did it anyway. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and do a test fit because the new U-joint is going to go on this portion here. So as you can see, it doesn't exactly slide exactly on. Uh, there's a little bit on the edges here. It flares out just a little bit, if you can see that on the video flares out in this direction so we're just going to go down here we're going to shave that down and make it slide directly into here and just like magic it's shaved down and now fitting so just as we had to clean the metal on this side you're also going to want to go ahead and clean the metal as much as you can on this side so that you get a good clean uh, weld so we're going to go ahead and clean that bit up Fast forward, as you can see, I went ahead and cleared this top surface, got that nice and clean. Um, now what I want to do is go around on the inside of the surface just to make sure that I enhance my uh, uh, welding area. And I'm just going to go inside of that with the die grinder. Thank you. 
So with that, we've actually got a nice bevel on the inside, and that's going to give us more surface area to weld to. So without further ado, let's go ahead and slap these bits together and bust out the dollar store welder. For this job, we're going to be using the Harbor Freight Special, the 90 amp flux core welder. If you're watching a video looking at doing these type of modifications, just go ahead and spend $100, buy one for yourself. It's definitely going to be worth it. You will not regret it. Before you go ahead and make this permanent, make sure that the shaft is not going to interfere with the articulation of this U-joint here. Uh, make sure you push it down far enough that it's pretty close because this U-joint does actually make the shaft slightly longer and you don't want to cause yourself any extra trouble. So get it as close as you can without actually causing any issues. As you move along, make sure you're cleaning your welds off because this is what's gonna this is gonna affect how well your welds actually seat. Definitely don't want these things to break while you're driving. So take care and make sure you clean off your area. Keep a nice clean work area. So here's what the rough welds look like on here. You know, not the prettiest job, but good enough for a gas monkey so anyway what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and clean this thing up again and get ready to throw some paint on it so here's a look at what the cleaned up piece looks like not a million times better but you know slightly better looks a little bit more like a finished product As we throw a coat of primer on here, I want to give a shout out to Bob's Turbo Garage. Uh, he's the person I got the idea from to do this. He uh, has a nice DIY video where he did the same thing for his Ford Fairmont. Uh, there's a few details that he left out that I just wanted to show. And since I'm doing this for myself, I wanted to go ahead and document the video. So here's the steering shaft all painted up. Uh, we're going to do a couple of other things just to ensure that this thing does not come apart and uh, what we're going to do is drill a hole through here and insert a bolt and what that's going to do is actually hold everything in place um, as a secondary measure you definitely need a good set of drill bits and a decent drill in order to be able to do this you're not going to do this with crappy uh, cheap bits otherwise it's definitely going to be the last time that you use those bits and also uh, make sure that you add a little bit of oil to your hole. You can use any kind of oil you have laying around. This is like some extra engine additive that I have left over from my engine build. But WD-40 will work just fine. And all you need is a drop and the drill will glide right through the metal. All right, as you can see here, we have a bolt that fits almost exactly into this hole. It's definitely a good fit. And... We're going to thread a nut onto the end of here and tighten this thing as tight as we can get it. So essentially what we've done here is uh, now we have double redundancy. So not only is the shaft welded to the U-joint here by these welds, but this bolt actually passes through both units. So even if the welds weren't here, this would be enough to hold it. So this is some double redundancy and uh, this isn't going to break. So the next thing we're going to do is trim this short and then I'm just going to tack this uh, nut on here and make it permanent. Um, but before I do that, there's one other thing that I want to take care of. Before I edited this video, someone pointed out that these nuts uh, or these Allen screws here could possibly back their way out and that would cause this pin here to fall out and the whole steering shaft would fall apart. So what we're going to do for these guys is we're going to lock tight them into place this is brake cleaner this is not carb cleaner folks carb cleaner actually can leave some oily residue 
So that's why we're going to go ahead and hit it with the brake cleaner, get rid of all this oil. And that should do it. It'll be nice and clean in about two seconds when this stuff dries. So here's a look at the finished product. All finished up and now it's ready to go inside the Fox. So uh, like I said before, we're going to be doing the install for this at the same time we do the install for the long tube headers and the motor mounts. So definitely check back, subscribe to the channel, throw some likes in there, leave me some comments. Thanks for watching guys. See you later.